what the Washington Post calls the coup that we call the Green Bay sweep. Been reporting about the attempt to seat uh, fraudulent electors. Um, is that something you ever worked on or would support, for example, in Michigan? That's so funny. It's not fraudulent electors, Ari. It's alternate electors. The plan was simply this. We had uh, over 100 congressmen and senators on Capitol Hill ready to implement the sweep. The sweep was simply that. We were going to challenge the, the results of the election in the six battleground states. You will use the incumbent losing party's power, that was the Republican Party that was losing power, to overtake and reverse that outcome. Do you realize you are describing a coup? I will totally accept the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. That's horrifying. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Hope you're doing well. Put this quick video together so you could see the coup plot. If you like what we do here, please subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell, drop a like down below, leave a comment. I hear that's good for the algorithm, and we'll see you real soon. Love you guys. Enjoy the video. You commit to making sure that there's a peaceful no, transfer of power. We want to have, get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very trans. We'll have a very peaceful. There won't be a transfer, frankly. There'll be a continuation. You know, every time Donald thinks things are not going in his direction, he claims whatever it is is rigged against him. Do you make the same commitment that you will absolutely, sir, that you will absolutely accept the result of this election? I will look at it at the time. I'm not looking at anything now. I'll look at it at the time. And will you pledge tonight that you will not declare victory until the election has been independently certified? President Trump, you I'm go first. I'm urging my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully because that's what has to happen. You know why? Because bad things happen in Philadelphia, bad things. And Are I you? am urging, I am urging my people. I hope it's going to be a fair election. If it's a fair You're election, I am 100 percent on board. But if I see tens of thousands of ballots being manipulated, I can't go along with that. It was prescribed by the Constitution. There is a provision to go rather than through the Electoral College to the House of Representatives. This is going to be a fraud like you've never seen. He lost it. Um, he lost in courts in Pennsylvania, Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Minnesota, Nevada, and Wisconsin. All of them said the same thing. They couldn't find any corruption. They couldn't find any fraud. Certainly nothing rising to a material level that would alter the outcome of any of the elections. Look, Ari, the difference between me and virtually everybody else in this debate is I did the homework. Excuse me, Chris. If you look at your voter rolls, you will see millions of people that are registered to vote. Millions. This isn't coming from me. This is coming from Pew Report and other places. Millions of people that are registered to vote <clears throat> that shouldn't be registered to vote. And the idea that that secretaries of state, particularly in Michigan and, and, and Pennsylvania, were like innocent parties. I mean, Jocelyn Benson and Kathy Bookfar, the secretaries of state in, in Michigan and Pennsylvania, they were put in power by George Soros. What I've seen, what I've seen is so bad. First of all, the media is so dishonest and so corrupt and the pile on is so amazing. The the thing that we were trying to deal with was was a media which refused to acknowledge any kind of possible fraud or irregularities. I'm happy to share all of the information about the overwhelming amount of fraud that happened in the 2020 election in Arizona, in Wisconsin, and Georgia, and Pennsylvania. Notice, number one, the big lie was refuted, devastated, and demolished in federal and state courts across the land, including by eight judges appointed by President Donald Trump himself. As we were doing the March for Trump bus tour, um, we were in communication and, and sending people um, that we had met along the way who, who had signed different affidavits um, to different members of Congress. The loser concedes to the winner and that the country comes together in part for the good of the country. Are you saying you're not prepared now to what i'm to that saying principle. is that i will tell you at the time i'll keep you in suspense wallace asked him again this summer can you give a direct answer you will accept the election i have to see 
look, you, I have to see. No, I'm not going to just say yes. I'm not going to say no. To, and I didn't last time either. Will you commit to making sure that there is a peaceful transfer of power after the election? Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots. Because I think this, this scam that the Democrats are pulling, it's a scam. The scam will be before the United States Supreme Court. And I think having a 4-4 situation is not a good situation if you get that and he lost in 61 straight cases in federal court and state court in the lowest courts in the land in the u.s supreme court i mean it's hard to imagine him having gotten more due process than that in pursuing what has come to be known popularly as the big lie and trump university gets sued for fraud and racketeering he claims the court system and the federal judge is rigged against him he said the FBI was rigged. He lost the Iowa caucus. He lost the Wisconsin primary. He said the Republican primary was rigged against him. He didn't get an Emmy for his TV program three years in a row, and he started tweeting that the Emmys were rigged against Should've him. Should have gotten it. This, this is a mindset. This is, this is how Donald thinks. We want to make sure the election is honest, and I'm not sure that it can be. I don't, I don't know that it can be with this whole situation unsolicited ballot will accept a free and a fair election result this election was stolen for president trump president trump won the 2020 election let me put it all to rest for all of you it'll be a smooth transition no concern on the outcome were you on board with what we heard from navarro that you would kick this to the house and somehow override the results well, first of all, the results are the results based on legal votes. So the results, as I believe them to be, based on the 83,000 unlawful ballots in Maricopa County in Arizona, the 200,000 unlawful ballots in Wisconsin, the tens of thousands of unlawful ballots in Georgia and the same in Pennsylvania, I believe the lawful results are that President Trump won the 2020 election. Judge Stefanos Bibas, who's a Trump uh, appointee, who was a, a part of the uh, appeals court panel, he said the campaign's claims have no merit. The number of ballots it specifically challenges is far smaller than the 81,000 vote margin of victory, and it never claims fraud or that any votes were cast by illegal voters. Plus, tossing out millions of mail-in ballots would be drastic and unprecedented, disenfranchising a huge swath of the electorate and upsetting all of the down-ballot races, too. What's been called the Green Bay Sweep at this point, which is the Ellipse Rally was supposed to be like the opening argument, if you will. They were supposed to present hard evidence that was kind of the hook. And then inside the Capitol, uh, when the split happened, the Green Bay sweep started and the objection started, uh, there was supposed to be more evidence presented at each one of those objections when the House and Senate split. We have not seen historically uh, any kind of coordinated national voter fraud effort uh, in a major election, uh, whether it's by mail or, or otherwise. The vice president's got a lot of power, and that's very important to recognize. That's a huge deal. Repeat that to the audience. I'll make sure everybody understands this. you got the buried lead right there. The vice president has a ton of power in terms of opening and counting the electoral, uh, the electoral college votes at the joint session on the 6th. So I keep saying the mantra, you call the play, now run the play, right? It's like the old Green Bay power sweep. It's very simple, very, just one thing leads to another, very logical, and the uh, victory is affirmed. Beginning on Thanksgiving, I produced what would be an exhaustive three volume report. I went over tens of thousands of pages of documents and proved that the election was on all likelihood stolen through fraud and election irregularities. That's the back background. We've had an orderly transfer of power every four years since Washington was selected for a second term in 1792. That will happen again to the winner of the November 3rd election. And at 1 p.m., Ted Cruz, Senator Ted Cruz, and Gosart, a, a representative, started the Green Bay sweep beautifully, challenging the results of Arizona. In terms of January 6th, the events actually inside the Capitol, the process, according to the Electoral Count Act, there was absolutely a plan and a process for there to be uh, to, to be challenges right. to the electoral so you just that there would be enough concern amongst the legislatures that m most or all of those states would decertify the election that would throw the election to the House of Representatives. You just described this plan as a way to take an election where the outcome was established by independent secretaries of state 
by the voters of those states, and legal remedies have been exhausted with the Supreme Court never even taking, let alone siding with, any of the claims that you just referred to. So legally, they went nowhere. Then you will use the incumbent losing party's power, that was the Republican Party that was losing power, to overtake and reverse that outcome. Do you realize you are describing a coup? Uh, there was no transition because they came after me trying to do a coup. Well, the, what the Washington Post calls the coup, uh, we call the Green Bay sweep. We were following the Constitution and rules of the Senate to simply get a recount of what the votes were. Um, but when you describe a system where after all of the legal remedies are exhausted, the people who lost just make noise and then say that they won and seize power. Don't you understand? I mean, this is my question for you because I get to talk to you directly sure. here. Don't you understand that if that actually were the system, it would be dumb? It would be dumb. And dangerous. If the people who lost could just get up there and say, well, we want to do our own count, mm -hmm. not the state law recount, not what the Supreme Court provides for. Everyone remembers Bush v. Gore. There are situations where they get involved. But just people in the Trump administration decide, well, we disagree. Don't you understand why people see your whatever you want to call it, you don't want to call it a coup, your thing where when you lose, you stay in power, they see that as really dangerous? The remedy was for Vice President Pence's, the quarterback in the Green Bay sweep, to remand those votes back to the six battleground states. Pence refused to take my repeated phone calls about election irregularities despite a direct request from President Trump to do so. Mike was always good to me until that day. The thing about Mike's betrayal of President Trump, which is really interesting, is he never shared the legal analysis of his general counsel, Greg Jaffer. Under the Electoral Count Act that was passed in, in the 1800s, after the election of 1876, the count was passed in, the 18, in 1886. The Electoral Count Act lays out a process to challenge electoral votes. Okay. There's also been reporting about the attempt to seat uh, fraudulent electors. Um, is that something you ever worked on or would support, for example, in Michigan? That's so funny. It's not fraudulent electors, Ari. It's alternate electors. We fought to seat the electors. Um, the Trump campaign asked us to do that. Uh, did you ever make calls like that uh, regarding what you're calling these alternate electors? I was quoted in the Washington Post in the last 24 hours. Yes, I was part of the process to make sure there were alternate electors for when, as we hoped, the challenges to the seated electors would be heard and would be successful per the 12th Amendment of the Constitution and the Electoral Count Act. I will totally accept the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. That's horrifying.